Yum, yum. What's up, guys? Uh, I want to show some progress on the uh, prototyping rigs journey that I'm in the middle of here. Uh, so I started with the nose rig. I figured it was a good kind of simple rig um, that was deceptively complex uh, to kind of show how the pieces can work together and also for me to kind of get my uh, feet wet in uh, building some of these master rigs. So um, here is just kind of an idea of what's going on in my schematic. Um, I used a couple of backdrops to help simplify um, working on it, but <clears throat> this is really less important. This is just showing you the different uh, the different pieces. Uh, it's pretty ugly at this point. Um, it is not portable at all. Um, I couldn't like create a rig preset out of this the way it sits right now and reuse it, but it really wasn't about that. It was just trying to figure out what's going to work, what isn't going to work, and, and all that stuff, and that's kind of the point of prototyping. Um, here you can see the, uh, the basic rigging, all the effectors, uh, morph influences, and then also here's uh, under our mesh ops is the uh, deformation system, basically the order of operations expressed so I can see uh, the stuff at the bottom is going to fire first and work its way up to the top. Um, so anyway, enough of that. Let's kind of show you what's going on here. So um, working on a nose rig, um, the key for me is to create something that's fleshy, um, that gives you the animator control. Um, and allows there to be character given um, with the nose. Uh, every piece of the face eventually will, will have uh, controls like this to allow an animator to move things around. So let's just take a look and see what we got here. So I've got a, a nose bend. Let's get this zoom in here. Let's see this a little bit better. So um, kind of move the, the nose forward. Um, it's kind of shaped there. Uh, we have a left and right. right so we can bend this guy to the left and to the right, right, kind of more of a wiggle. Um, I have a translate left and right, it's kind of a shift. Uh, we have a forward and backward shift, so we can move this stuff down, um, and then a, a bit of a twist, okay? Let's see what this kind of thing here. So let's, let's just deconstruct this a little bit. Um, the idea is to allow the animator to get character um, in the nose, uh, and, you know, supply the tools that they need to get the performances that they're looking for in any animation they're working on. A lot of times, um, you will want to create something that isn't very natural, especially when you're talking about, um, you know, cartoon-type animation. So you're looking for certain silhouettes, you're lo looking for certain um, shapes to be visible or not visible, whether it's real or not. So a lot of these controls are kind of designed around that in mind, that, you know, you may want a little bit of a wiggle like this. Um, you want to be able to, you know, sneer, pull the face up and do this kind of a stuff that looks good. But you also may want to just shift it out of the way or adjust a silhouette. So imagine, you know, if we're looking at something like from here, that <clears throat> by shifting the nose over, right, I can expose more or less of the eye. Um, so you can do things like, um, you know, I pull the length of the nose down and I can shift it over as well as swing it through. So by these controls, it allows a, more, a much more custom kind of final silhouette or shape that you see at any particular frame in the animation. So not natural, but controllable. Um, now, one thing that's also, um, which is nice, kind of the way I structured it, was to use a single weight container for all the effects on the major part of the nose. Let me show you what that looks like. So this is the weight container, and it's basically just setting up a weight map saying, hey, this is the area that I want to work on with the nose. And then it is wired into the bend and, you know, the, the left-right bend, the, full, the front and back bend, as well as um, the translate. So that means that I can go into my one weight container and I can make changes to its weighting, and it will affect all those other deformers. So it allows me to more instead of trying to say oh, okay i'm going to make the let's say the swing left and right and make it look nice and clean and flowing um then now oh, i got to copy this map and paste it into three different places but then if you want to make a change you got to copy and paste it in all those three places again this allows me to do it in one place um and work with all these these shapes um or all these different uh deformation effects uh, which is good it, it allows that um that reuse which is nice now there's a there's a consequence of that, and it's not a bad thing, but that also means I have to make sure that all of these guys work well together in this nice smooth space, and it may not give me the final result that I'm looking for. And this is really that idea, and I'm gonna cover this in depth in the training, um, of 
weighting versus shape correction, right? Or sculpting. You can use whatever word, but you know, how do I make my straight deformers move things around? How do I make that weighting work? And then what am I doing to get the specific shapes that I want at any one point um, in the deformation picture? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out a word to describe But in this case, when the nose swings, let's just actually look at this and you'll see. So let's say I take the, the nose LR and I move it. What you're going to see is there's this, you know, this mass is building up here, right? So I'm, I'm doing this kind of a thing like this. And this shape here is not in line with the bend. This shape is this guy right here. So this is, this is me sculpting this shape using a morph influence so that when the nose comes up, I get that nice kind of, you know, meat that's up above the nose, um, right? So that shaping is specific to this one direction. And it needs to be, right? I couldn't really reuse that shape for you know, moving the nose down or moving the nose forward. It's really for this. But I did want to use a single weighting so that I can nicely blend and smooth things out so I get nice fleshy movement and not have to redo that work like five times. So that's that's kind of what I'm talking about, the difference between, you know, using weighting versus shape corrections and kind of blending them together. I'm going to, again, I'm going to go into more detail on why you do that. But that's what's happening here. So let's take a look at the the other stuff too. So you know, that's, that's what's happening here. Now, one thing that I did not do, and this is because it's a prototype, is if you look at, look at these, these spans right here. Actually, I wonder if I can do this. It may not let me do it when I pop out. Oh, no, it won't. Okay, well, you'll just have to look at it. <laughs> um, but watch this. So, you see the movement? And see this guy here? Um, sorry, I'm pointing. You can see me pointing, but if the, the the mouse over there. When when I when I go like this, you see how those points are moving. But then when I go to the negative, they stop. You get a hit. It's like it's moving, and then boom, it stops. If this was a production rig and I was trying to finish this um, to deliver it, I would make sure that no matter which direction I was going in this, so the, the nose bent up and then the nose comes the other way, that that movement would look smooth across that boundary line, across the zero, right? Positive bend versus negative bend. You want to make sure that all of the shapes and all the spans on either sides are smoothly moving between the pieces. Being it's a prototype, I'm not so much worried about that. <laughs> I just wanted to make the shapes work. But uh, you see what's going on there. So anyway, that's, that's kind of that. Um, so let's take a look at the nostril stuff. Um, so we can adjust the length, all that, but you also want to be able to do things with a nostril, give them character as well. So I want to be able to do this, which is kind of like, you know, a sneer, you're kind of lifting it up that way, right? Um, there's a size, you can flare, like imagine if you're like angry, you want to make those things breathe and like that. Um, not that you guys need to hear or want to hear me breathing through my nose. <laughs> um, there's a lift, so you can pick that up, right? So you already can see without doing anything with the mouth or the eyes, you're already starting to feel tension in this character's face. And I'm really, I'm just dealing with the nostrils because we associate that, you know, or that scrunching up with, with tension. Um, and then obviously we can shift it left and right and I can do this for either side. So I can go through here, um, adjust the scale of this. I can lift it a little bit. I can do the right nostril open, um, right? And we're getting, we're getting these guys here. Yeah, all right, good. So let's go here, right? We can go that kind of a thing. We're lifting the nostril there. You can see we get those nice shapes. And then we can still do this, and it all works nice together. And this is that, you know, you, you play around with everything. So even though I've got a different shape happening when the nose goes with the full left, um, it's still playing nice with the... Um, so I can pull this up here, right? You can see all, how these things are kind of playing all nicely together. Um, if I take my left nostril and I and I play with this, or I do my lift, right? All of the all this shape stuff is working. And honestly, as when you're doing a rig that's gonna go all the way through the pipe, you're gonna get an animator, and you're gonna want to work with them to make sure that you give them the shapes that that they're looking for. And in combination, typically when you're rigging. Uh, 
especially when you're getting started, you tend to just look at stuff. It's like, all right, I'm going to move my arm this much. Looks great. Woo! But an animator's going to take that, and they're going to move it to 1,000 degrees. They're going to spin it all the way around. They're going to put the character on its head, and they're going to open the mouth. and everything. They're going to, do, they're going to fire every control in the universe um, to in the service of trying to hit the acting and the character they're trying to get out of this thing. And it almost always means that they're going to push your controls much further than you are. Um, so making sure that all these guys can play nicely together at a start is, is always, is always good. It's really important because they're going to break it the second they touch it. Um, and I don't even mean that as a bad thing. They're just going to push things to make it as good as it possibly can be to hit what they're looking for at the end of the day. That's what we're both looking for, which is a really great end result, um, a really great character on screen. So anyway, I'm rambling. Um, <clears throat> the, the takeaway here is break your stuff, put, you know, Push it too far. In this case, you know, I scale the nostril up here, and it, it's crashing through the face. I don't see needing to do that um, in this case, so I've kind of kept it in this kind of reasonable range. Um, but if this character needs to do something crazy in the animation, um, my animator, uh, my anim collaborator, as I'm calling them, uh, they're gonna they're gonna show me. <laughs> they're, they're gonna they're gonna say, nope, Rich, that's not good enough. Um, and then I'm going to need to uh, push these things even further. So. Anyway, this is it. Prototype land. Uh, things are working. Uh, I'm pretty happy with overall what I've been able to get in here. Um, I think I'm going to put this one down and then move on to the next rig. I don't know which one yet, uh, but we're going to work our way through the face, uh, and I'm going to share kind of my journey as I'm prototyping here with you guys. Um, and then all of this uh, in very clean, clear detail, less rambly than this, will be in the, the new RMC3 uh, so that I can really show you and teach not only the technical side of how to build these rigs, but also some of these theories that I'm rambling on about, about weighting versus shaping, um, uh, how to work with an animator, how to work with an art director, and all these pieces. It's, it's going to be more than, than just a, a rig by numbers, you know, paint by numbers approach. I'm really going to try to download the, the whole process to you guys. So anyway, prototyping in the nose. Thanks, guys.